Welcome to Altium Designer PCB Fabrication Files. In this module, we will learn how to generate the needed files for fabrication and documentation. Then, using LJobs, we will automate the generation of the needed fabrication files. Let's start by documenting the design using Smart PDF File Generation. From the File pull-down menu, select Smart PDF. This opens up the Smart PDF wizard and walks us through the process. Click on Next where we can choose either the entire project or the current document in focus. We will pick Project. Here we could change the destination for the generated file, but for now we'll leave it to the default. Next, we see a list of files to be exported into the PDF. Right-clicking in the window allows us to select schematics or PCB-only options as well as all. We will set it to all schematics. Now we can generate the bill of materials here as well, but for now we will not, as we have not yet tried to generate the bill of materials for this design, and it may require some additional schematic work. Now the additional settings for the PDF file can be modified. We will keep the defaults for now, but note there are a number of options available to customize the resulting PDF file. In the structure settings, we can use the physical structure or not. As this design is not a multi-channel one, we will not need to use this option. The last step before kicking off the Smart PDF generation is to ensure the Open PDF file after export is checked, so we can see it. The other option is to have Altium create and save the settings for the Smart PDF file creation to an out job. We will check this as well, and this will form the basis for our automation of fabrication files later on in this module. Clicking Finish generates the PDF file and creates an out job file with the Smart PDF entry under the Documentation Outputs group. Right-clicking on the OutJob Schematic Prints entry opens up a menu where we could select Page Setup or Configuration. Opening up the Page Setup, we could modify the settings if needed. Likewise, opening up the Configure allows us to edit and review what is or is not included in the schematic prints. Looking at the Smart PDF, we can see all of the schematics grouped under the Schematics Prints heading. Clicking on any of the schematic sheets will open that page. Clicking on the plus sign expands the selected schematic to allow us to dive deeper into that sheet's nets, components, and ports. Clicking on components, for example, and then picking a component, will open the schematic and highlight the component on the page. Likewise, diving into the nets, we can navigate down to the pin on each net and highlight it. The ports list all of the ports for this page. Going back to the schematics, let's generate the bill of material and review the results. Click on Reports, then Bill of Materials. This will compile the design and create the bill of material window, listing all of the entries. We can modify this, adding or removing columns as needed. Let's look at the supplier and supplier part number columns. Scrolling down and clicking on the plus sign to open up the Solution 1 category, let's check both Supplier 1 and Supplier Part Number 1 checkboxes. We want both of these columns displayed so that the created bill of material file will include them. To remove a column, simply uncheck it from the list. For example, let's remove the library references. To force a single line per reference designator, grab the entry from the All Columns section and drag it up to the Group Column section. Now we have one line for each reference designator, just like with the comments and footprints. Moving an entry from the Grouped category to All would revert back to the arrangement we started with. I normally use this setup for generating the bill of materials as it combines the part types and provides for an aggregated quantity number for purchasing. We can add the generated bill of material to the project by checking the box as well as enabling opening up the bill of material from the export operation. I normally check the open option as I would like to view it in Excel. Before we continue and export the bill of material, the export template option bears some mention. Altium Designer has the capacity to map the bill of materials to a template. There are a number of standard templates provided which can be selected using the menu. If interested, consider looking further into using templates and creating a custom template for your company. Selecting the Bill of Material default template and clicking on Export instead of OK will generate and export the Bill of Material. Clicking OK just saves and closes the window with its settings. 
With the Bill and Material default template selected, we get the generated Excel file with the column shown. If we re-export without the template, the columns we added will be included in the Excel file like this. You can see that there are some components in the exported file without supplier information. We could also have seen this in the Bill of Materials window. C33 and C51 are an example. Let's correct that in the schematics. Go into the schematics, hit J and C, and then type C33 to locate it. This is a 0.1 microfarad 0603 footprint capacitor, but it does not have any supplier information from the library. Let's add some using the Supplier Search feature of Altium. Clicking on System and Supplier Search opens up its panel. In the keyword field, enter 0.1 microfarad 0603 and hit Search. This brings up some options. Picking one, we can right-click and select Add Supplier Link and Parameters to the part. Now opening up C33 Properties window, we can see the added information. This could be done for all the parts missing supplier information and should be, in fact, before we regenerate the final bill of materials. Here we see the updated bill of materials showing the added supplier details for C33 and 51. While we add it, we should update the out job to include the bill of material generation. Opening up the out job and selecting New Report Output, pick Bill of Materials. Now we would select Project for the data source. Double-clicking on this entry will kick off a compile, and then the familiar Bill of Materials window opens up, and we can edit it to include the supplier information. Clicking OK sets up this entry for the out job, so the next time we want to regenerate a fresh Bill of Materials, we could do so from the out job. In the out job, there are three basic containers possible, a PDF file, a folder, and video. We will use both PDF and folders for our file generation destinations. The schematic prints target a PDF file, and that is the container selected. The bill of material generates an Excel file, and we would normally put that into a folder. To do so, click on the folder structure container, and then click on the circle associated with the bill of material entry. This would put the bill of material file into the folder when we select Generate option for the container. Note the order that the outputs are selected is reflected in the circle numbers and can be changed by unselecting and reselecting the entries in their desired order. Moving to the PCB, we come to my favorite file to generate, the 3D PDF for the PCB. To do so, click on File, Export PDF 3D. This opens up a menu for the generation of the 3D PDF view of the board. I generally use the defaults and hit Export. This will open up the generated 3D PDF for the PC board. We can move and rotate the image, zooming in and out as needed. Left click and hold, now moving the mouse, we can rotate the image. Right clicking and hold, we can move the mouse up and down to zoom in and out. You will also notice in this view that we can see a step model for the Raspberry Pi in the version of the PCB we are looking at. Having a 3D PDF allowing for rotation and zooming gives a significant boost in the visualization of the finished PC board. Another very useful file to generate is the 3D step file of the PCB. This is used by the MCAD folks to represent the PCB in their environment. Normally they would use this for case fitting and possible airflow analysis as well as checking the interfaces between the PCB, its components, and the case openings. Using the file pull-down menu, select Export and then Step 3D. This opens up the Step Export Options window. One useful feature is the ability to export the PCB in its folded state. This feature is there to allow for rigid flex PC boards to generate the step file in the proper configuration, either folded completely or not, depending on your needs. Clicking OK generates the step file. Now that we are happy with the board and have used the generated documentation for our reviews, we need to generate the fabrication files for the board. With the PCB open, click on File, Fabrication Outputs, and select Gerber. You can see there are other file output options, and those could be used if needed. This opens up the Gerber setup window. Please take some time to set this up. The default settings are for the highest precision without any layers enabled for generation. 
We will set the precision to 2.4 format. Next, let's click on the Layers tab. Here I generally click on the Plot Layers pull-down menu and select Used On. You can add or uncheck layers at this point in the upper section as needed. Continuing, I generate the drill drawing plots at the same time. The apertures I leave set to RS-274X, and I will also show the Advanced tab window for completeness, although we won't be changing anything there. Please feel free to check these settings if needed for your fabrication house. Clicking OK will generate the Gerber files, and in the process, open up the Camtastic viewer. The Gerber layers are listed in the Camtastic panel and can be viewed one at a time, first by turning off all of them and then clicking on the checkbox for each layer you wish to review. Close this document and do not save it. Saving this Camtastic file causes some issues with PCB fab houses if they inadvertently get sent this file, so I never keep this file around. It's useful to look at and review the Gerber file generation at this time, but afterwards I get rid of it. Now that we have generated the Gerbers manually, let's continue our automation of the fabrication files by adding Gerber file generation to the project's outjob. Double-clicking on the outjob, we can add a new fabrication output by clicking on that entry. We will select Gerber file and PCB document. One thing while we're here, you'll note that for all the outjob entries, I have used the generic data source name, either PCB document, or schematic documents, or project. This creates an outjob file that is portable and can be copied and reused for all of the projects with the setups in place. If I am copying it to another project, I would normally check the Gerber file layer configuration for the new PC board, considering it may not have the same layers. But for the most part, I copy and paste the outjob. This saves a lot of time in my setup. As mentioned earlier, with multiple entries, we can order their creation and placement in the destination folder by clicking on the circle to add them. The order of generation for the files in the folder is not important, but when generating PDF, the order is reflected in the end PDF document.